Wan Zambia One Nation, it is 18 hours and with the news at this hour, my name is Lester Mtokwa. We now take a look at what makes headlines. President Edgar Lungo has called for national unity and tolerance across the political divide of the Zambian society. A six-month-old baby has died after being punched on the head. And in sports news, all is set for this evening's World Boxing Council WBC Gold Bantamweight title defense fight between champion Catherine Piri and her opponent, Gipesile Shabalala. And now the news in detail. President Edgar Lungo has called for national unity and tolerance across the political divide of the Zambian society. President Lungo says political violence has no place in Zambia, hence the need for all well-meaning Zambians to denounce political violence. The president says he is happy that traditional leaders and the church have continued to denounce violence. President Lungo says government to deal with anyone perpetrating violence. The president also implored Zambians to plant a seed of unity in order to preserve a Zambia's cherished record as a peaceful and stable democracy founded on the One Zambia, One Nation motto. And the president says traditional ceremonies contribute immensely to peace and national unit. President Lungo says this is why government considers traditional ceremonies as crucial to national development. The president wished Paramount Chief Gawaundi good health and God's wisdom. President Lungo was speaking today in Mkaika Katete district when he officiated at this year's Kulamba traditional ceremony of the Chewa people of Zambia, Malawi, and Mozambique. Meanwhile, Paramount Chief Gawaundi has also reiterated the need for political party leaders to end post-election violence. The Paramount Chief said there is need for Zambians to embrace one another regardless of their political affiliations. The traditional leader who spoke through Kulamba National Organizing Committee Chair person Rafael Piri also called on governments of Zambia, Malawi, and Mozambique to expedite the operationalization of the Nakara Corridor. Several international and local dignitaries, including PF parliamentarians, officials, and MMD leader Felix Mutati, were in attendance. Meanwhile, Holy Ghost Impact Church Bishop Bonfess Makumba says it will be costly for the country to allow peace and unity to disintegrate. Bishop Makumba says peace and unity is key to economic development of any country. Bishop Makumba further called on civil society organizations in the country to join in preaching peace and unity. He was speaking during the TV2's News and Current Affairs program seven days today. Are you seen to be doing that? Definitely, we, we are doing that. And uh, if the level is not reaching the climax, I think we need to steer up ourselves and, you know, uh, do it much more. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is a reason I uh, request that all men and women uh, of God countrywide, even those in the diaspora, mm -hmm. rise to this occasion and uh, preach peace in the entire nation. Because without it, Brother Wadia, we cannot have anything. We can't even have people saved. Because when there is uh, no peace, people run, and, and uh, even the families cannot be well sustained, companies cannot be sustained. I think we have so many examples of other nations <coughs> that have lost peace, and things have really gone berserk. But thanks be to God that Zambia is a peaceful nation, and we do all what can be done through prayer, through preaching the word of God, and allowing peace to reign in this land of Zambia. And a key to a bed's freedom fighter, Frederick Kasusu, has urged all Zambians to remain united and peaceful after the elections. Mr. Kasusu says Zambia is known for peace and all citizens should work at enhancing the peace and unity that was fought for 50 years ago. He said it is sad that young people continue to involve themselves in violence despite being the future leaders. Mr. Kasusu said it is important that all Zambians accept the election results and should now focus on working together. The freedom fighter said this in in a walk-in interview with ZNBC News in Kitwe today. The Southern African Center for Constructive Resolution of Disputes, SACOD, has called on government to start initiating the process for a stakeholder's consultative meeting on the referendum. SACOD Executive Director Bonfess Chembe says there is need for the country to revisit the Bill of Rights and referendum because the amended constitution talks about the said rights. He has since expressed disappointment with the failed referendum in an interview with ZNBC News, saying Zambians have missed out on a great opportunity for the expanded 
Bill of Rights. Mr. Chembe says his organization expressed fear of holding a referendum alongside the general elections because of little time for sensitization and politicians focusing more on their campaigns compared to the referendum. We believe that uh, there will be need for the country uh, to revisit uh, the Bill of Rights, to revisit uh, the issue of the referendum for a very simple reason. We have an amended constitution that speaks very highly of an expanded Bill of Rights, including rights of uh, women and children. However, if you go to the Bill of Rights, uh, those rights are not there. So you cannot have contradictions uh, between uh, a constitution uh, of the land and what is contained in the Bill of Rights. So it's only logical that going forward, we begin to revisit this whole issue uh, of a referendum, uh, but also the Bill of Rights. And a few things uh, can obviously be done. Uh, we believe that the government needs to start uh, initiating a process of holding uh, a stakeholders consultative meeting on the best approach that we need to take as a country to ensure that we consider uh, relooking at the whole issue of the Bill of Rights. Yeah, I would like to thank the Teaching Council. A six-month-old baby has died after being punched on the head. The incident happened after the mother of the deceased had a misunderstanding with a woman identified as Patricia Kaswili at Oasis Bar in Kafue's Chikos Chikoswe area. The incident happened on Monday this week around 05.30 hours. Police spokesperson Ray Hamonga has confirmed the development in a statement to TV2 News in Lusaka this afternoon. Mr. Hamonga said the matter was reported to the police by the mother of the deceased. He said post-mortem was conducted today and that the body has since been buried. We take our first break and still to come. Residents of Lusaka's garden compound bemoan poor sanitation plus many more stories. Stay with us. We continue with the news. The Zambia National Union of Teachers Zanot is concerned with reports of colleges that are engaging unqualified lecturers. Zanot General Secretary Nyo Manhebobala says the move is compromising the quality of professionals being produced. Ms. Abobala also appealed to the Teaching Council of Zambia to intensify monitoring of standards in teaching colleges to ensure there is sanity. He was reacting to a statement by the Teaching Council of Zambia that some colleges are engaging unqualified lecturers and admitting students in colleges without proper qualifications. Thank the Teaching Council and uh, we are glad that they, they really are putting their foot on the ground to check that we have no more uh, the situation in the colleges as well as in the way we, we recruit people who are going to be trained at these colleges. Uh, it is also come to our attention that in some of these private schools, it's very, very true that the, the standards are too low and the ways of recruitment it does not meet the standard of what we expect as a labor movement. So the Teaching Council of Zambia on Thursday warned colleges to stop engaging unqualified lecturers. Council Registrar Ebi Mubanga said a recent survey revealed that some colleges were engaging unqualified lecturers contrary to the requirement by the council. Dr. Mubanga added that some colleges were also admitting students in colleges without proper qualifications. The building of a 41 houses for immigration officers in Lusaka's Silverest area has reached a roof level. This is part of the 2035 housing units for officers under the Ministry of Home Affairs. AVIC International, the contractor says works are expected to be handed over to government by January 2017. Lufolan Kowani has more in this report. The works here are now at roof level. These are the 41 housing units made for immigration officers. After the project is complete, this is how the houses are expected to look. Government is currently constructing 2,035 housing units for officers from police, correctional services and the Drug Enforcement Commission. We are really impressed and I want to mention that before the end of this year, about two now, two, 219 housing units will be commenced in terms of construction at Lai uh, College. So basically we are impressed with AVIC International. This is the way it should be. And um, I think um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, cushioning housing deficits in the Ministry of Home Affairs, uh, we are doing very fine. Our desire is to ensure that our men and women in uniform have decent accommodation so that they can uh, perform their duties effectively and efficiently. 
Avic International is a company that is working on this project. The engineers are confident that come January 2017, the project will be handed over to government. Um, this project from the May, uh, beginning from the May, and uh, we'll finish the uh, the next year uh, January, and uh, everything is okay now. Um, uh, you can see every uh, the wall, uh, every house, the wall is all finished, um, so uh, we will do it at uh, on time. Thank you so much. The housing units are being constructed at a total cost of 320 million United States dollars. Once the construction is complete, officers in the Ministry of Home Affairs will no longer worry about issues of lack of accommodation. Lufala Nkowani, TV2 News. In Lusaka. The Monali School of Excellence, which is under construction, is expected to be completed by June 2017. The project was started in 2010 with the China Yang working as the contractors. Ministry of Education spokesperson Hilary Chipango says the total expenditure for the completion of this project is 110 million kwacha. We have more in this. This is the new Munali School of Excellence under construction. The school has been specifically designed for the physically challenged children and those with special needs. The school is 80% complete. The contractor, China Zhengxi Corporation, is on course to hand over the 110 million Kwachi school to the government by June 2017. We, we have gone halfway uh, to complete this. So we are just waiting for more funding to complete. Teachers' houses are also being built within the school premises, and government is happy with the project so far. We'll be able to have also special education teachers that will be teaching these kids at this very, very big institution. We started the construction of this school in June 2010 but we have since revised the completion date to 10th June 2017. The coming of this school will surely help children with special needs by enhancing their educational development from primary to secondary school level. Kabembe Kasabola, TV2 News, Lusaka. Residents of Lusaka's garden compound have expressed concern over poor sanitation in the area. The residents have complained to TV2 News that most of the pit latrines are in bad state. We have more in this report. Lusaka's garden compound is one of the densely populated areas in the city. The high population has created a challenge of poor sanitation in the area. Residents of Garden Compound are appealing for improved sanitation to avoid disease outbreaks. Most of the pit latrines have been used beyond what they can take in. They are full, but no adequate space exists for building new ones. People here are worried about the effects. <laughs> But we are not using it. When you want to use it, you should dig a bowl. But land also is finished. You can't dig a bowl two years again, you dig another one. But you need if you are going to... I want to sell some of my toilet. I want to sell some of my diaper. So I want to sell some of my toilet. I want to sell some of my toilet. Meanwhile, efforts to get a comment from Lusaka Water and Storage Company, public relations officer, failed by press time. It is hoped that authorities will soon respond to concerns of poor sanitation in garden compound to help prevent disease outbreaks. Wupe Kawusue, TV2 News in Lusaka. The non-government organizations called Natic Council, NGOCs in southern province, says most rural community, communities and villages of the province still face increasing numbers of early child marriages. Southern province coordinator Mary Loneta says there is need to put a stop to the practice, especially in rural areas where parents have continued to declare their young girls ready for marriage for monetary gain. Speaking in an interview with ZNBC News in Levenston, Mrs. Loneta urged stakeholders us to work together in sensitizing the public on the dangers of early marriages. She has appealed to members of the public to protect lives of children, especially the girl child. 
have a challenge uh, in um, um, uh, these uh, rural communities, even in the villages, we're still having a problem because uh, when you go out there, our friends, they don't understand the aspect of somebody being a child because when you look at uh, the village setup, when somebody comes of age, then they are well able to be married off. So they still don't understand that fact. And I must commend the government, I think, under the Ministry of Gender, uh, the, the program that was launched in 2013 to end child marriages. This is a program that will enhance the sensitization so that people understand. Still in the southern province, some fish farmers in Livingston say there is need for investment in the fish farming industry in order to enhance its development. Zambezi Otma Lakes manager Luputa Muyobo has told ZNBC News in Levenstone that the tourist capital has favorable weather conditions during the summer to produce huge numbers of fish for export. He has encouraged farmers in the district to join hands and grow the industry in the tourist capital, which will in, in turn attract investment. We go for another break. After that, sports and foreign news. You're still watching our 18 hours news and just now we get to foreign news and in international news the, tour, the Tunisian parliament has voted to approve a new government which will take office in the next few days. The unit government led by Prime Minister designate Yosef Chahed was backed by 167 members of the 217 seat parliament. The government includes Islamists lefts, unionists, and independents. Yusuf Chayed 40 will become Tunisia's youngest prime minister since the country won its independence from uh, France in 1956. Mr. Chayed won in parliament then an austerity program with the public sector job cuts and tax rises would be inevitable if Tunisia does not overcome its economic difficulties. The North African state is struggling with lower tourism revenues after two Islamic militant attacks on foreign tourists last year. Tunisia's uprising was the first of the Arab Spring and often held as the most successful with the country now functioning as a parliamentary democracy. In sports news, Oriental Quarries Box and Promotions Operations Manager Christopher Malonga says all oh, is set for this evening as World Boxing Council WBC Gold Bantamweight title defense fight between champion Catherine Piri and her opponent Kivisile Shabalala. Malonga says both local and international requirements for the fight have been met. He urged all boxing fans to turn up in numbers and support Catherine during her WBC Gold Bantamweight title defense. Malunga was speaking when he featured on the TV 2's News and Current Affairs Seven Days Today program. Sanctioned uh, by WBC and uh, in uh, conjunction with the local boxing board of control, uh, everything has been done, and uh, you saw the commission have been happy uh, because I, I don't think if you haven't met anything, you can, the boxers can even get on the scale. So. Uh, it's 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 a done deal. I think uh, the only thing which is remaining is that the funds needs to come in numbers at government complex. It's a very important fight. It's a first defense. It's a first defense for Kathy, and it's a first defense Zambia. Uh, it's a first uh, the WBC gold title fight being hosted in Zambia and uh, or being promoted in Zambia. So it's it's very important bout. And you know that uh, because of the achievement of winning the title in Mexico, a lot of things came on board by been an ambassador for UNICEF. She was already ambassador for Zikta Child Online Protection Ambassador, Zambia Police Ambassador. And uh, that brought a lot of value to her career. And boxing fans in Lusaka have predicted a win for Catherine Piri in this evening's bout with South Africa's Givisile Shabalala. The fans are positive that Catherine will carry the day and are looking forward to the bout. In a random survey by TV2 Sports News crew, the fans said they have confidence in Catherine because she has never disappointed fans at home. It will be a very easy fight, but you know, South African fighters are well, they are very good fighters. I'm sure uh, Catherine Piri will raise the occasion and, and beat up this lady. I, I, I'm very confident she'll take the fight. To support my local team, which is uh, the Catherine, she's going to win. 
nikaanza tazawi na ndio kutena kwa hivyo ndio tena maningi so na ngoshika le bwanja afu nika win and what i'm expecting is that Catherine Mpire you win the, the fight that brings us to the end of our news at 18 hours and in wrapping up we recap on the headlines President Edgar Lungo has called for national unity and tolerance across the political divide of the Zambian society. President Lungo says political violence has no place in Zambia, hence the need for all well-meaning Zambians to denounce political violence. A six-month-old baby has died after being punched on the head. The incident happened after the mother of the deceased had a misunderstanding with a woman identified as Patricia Kaswili at Oasis Bar in Kafue's Chikoswe area. And in sports news, Oriental Quarries Boxing Promotions Operations Manager Christopher Malunga says all is set for this evening as World Boxing Council WBC Golden Gold Bantamweight title defense fight between Petrin and her opponent Givisele. Malunga says both local and international requirements for the fight have been met. I'll be back at 20 hours with more news. Good evening.